When you think of Google's transportation program, you probably think of this, the Google bus uh, all over the Bay Area. What you may not know is that this is a historical accident. Uh, Google didn't intend to be a transportation provider, but what happened was when the company was young, a group of people realized there was really no public transit service to our campus in Mountain View, and they got together and created a van pool. And the van pool became a shuttle, and the shuttle became two shuttles, and two became four. And now we have more than 200 shuttles moving, more than three million, getting close to four million people a year. That's more than 6,500 cars a day off the highway. And if you can imagine 101 with another few thousand cars on it, you would know it would be bad if we didn't have this going. And by the way, today there are still only three public transit buses that come to the corporate headquarters of Google, uh, micro, uh, not Microsoft headquarters, LinkedIn and Intuit headquarters. So we still have to continue the bus system. But when we think of our transportation system, we also think of all the other things you have to do, not just deliver them to the office, but you have to connect them to everything they need during the day. So we have fleets of electric cars, a massive EV charging uh, set of stations. We have a thousand bikes to get people around. We have an e-bike fleet now. And we even have an infrastructure program where we invest in creating infrastructure that should have been there all along. Uh, where most of our offices are, when these campuses were built, everything was so assumed that people would drive everywhere for every lunch, for every meeting, that sidewalks weren't even put in. So we've started with sidewalks, crosswalks, and now we've built uh, bike lanes and now entire bike paths. You see uh, Congresswoman Anna Eshoo in the center introducing our newly resurfaced four miles of the Bay Trail, which is a connection now. Uh, it was a nice path before, but it wasn't a place where bikers wanted to be. And now we've connected Palo Alto, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, and into San Jose with a really smooth, awesome bike path. So we like to engage. Let me dispel two myths. One myth that we are a Mountain View company and that our people live in San Francisco. Number one, we're now way beyond being a Mountain View company. In fact, we're pretty heavily in San Mateo. We have our two offices in South San Francisco from two of Google's related Alphabet companies. Uh, YouTube is growing strongly in San Bruno, and even though we're not occupying them yet, we're getting uh, ready to occupy a number of facilities in Redwood City that we have uh, acquired over the last few years. So we are, we are present all across the peninsula, all up and down the peninsula. Also in the background, you see a heat map of where our employees live. And while a number of them do live in San Francisco, they really live everywhere. And that's why we're still in the bus business. Uh, but predominantly, people do like to live close to where they work. And so we've identified that as saying, people actually do, almost half of our, actually half of our employees live within 11 miles, uh, which is one of the reasons why we were led to look at biking. And that'll be a segue to my next point of getting everybody connected. On a good day, we can have 10% of our employees, almost 2,000 people biking to work, which is great for local traffic. But our VPs challenge us, why, don't you, why can't you double that? Why can't you get 20% of the people biking to work? And we looked and people were telling us, ah, I don't feel safe, it doesn't feel safe out there. And we looked at the map of the area bike paths and said, there's lots of bike paths, there's lots of bike lanes, you know, why is it that you don't feel safe? And the answer is, if you think in a ski analogy, the green, the green lines being green runs, a lot of them are double black diamonds. They're not really connected bike paths. You've got these really dangerous high speed cars merging uh, sections in the middle. And so we went back and said, okay, where are the gaps? And where are we gonna work on to fix the gaps in our system? And a lot of them were logical, highway entrances, expressways, and we realized there were some gaps that weren't as logical. There were places that it should have been easy and you look at the map again, you look at some of these gaps, and you don't have to be from the area to, to tell, if I told you it's Palo Alto, Mountain View, and Sunnyvale, where are the city limit boundaries? They're where the gaps are. We haven't always thought regional. We haven't thought about connecting with our neighbors. And a lot of that is, is a little bit logical. If you, if you had always thought of yourself as an island, you don't build a highway to the water's edge. You just build it close to the edge, and, and you don't worry about the rest. And even some very, very well-meaning consultants you know, still make this mistake. And, and I think it's easy to fix. The good news is these problems are easy to fix. Mountain View had consultants that said, here's a great set of bike lanes that go all the way to the city limit boundaries. This is a plan. Where should we focus our attention? They took the plan to the BPAC, our Bike Pet Advisory Committee, and showed them this map. And even these great consultants are still bringing this map 
without showing them where should we focus our attention, what would help to know what our neighbor city, neighboring cities were doing. So small changes in how we approach the problem like this, just thinking regionally from the beginning can have a huge impact. Here's a map of how people move around the Bay Area. It's clustered in some places, people do tend to stay local, but really movement doesn't stop at city limit boundaries, movement doesn't stop at county boundaries. Here's a map of each of the transit agencies and their stops. With the exception of the ferry, BART, and Caltrain, the systems are pretty much planned as islands. And if you're in San Francisco along the peninsula, San Jose or up toward Oakland, at least you can get to the edge of your network and step to the next one. If you really look at the East Bay and North Bay, once again, they really are planned as islands and don't even connect to their neighbors. Uh, so this is the reason why Google is still, after all these years, still in the shuttle business. Roseanne stole a lot of what I wanted to say on this next section. I mean, we are now, we live in the peninsula, Googlers work in the peninsula, we have offices here, we're growing here, both, both in the growth in office space, and as you all know, the peninsula is a great place to live, especially being between, just in the middle of everything that makes Silicon Valley and, and the Bay Area so nice. So we intend to be here a while, and we've got five main priorities. Bikes, number one, I mentioned, there's a lot of people who are only going one, two, three exits on the freeway. Getting more and more people biking to work is good for the area in so many ways. Connected transit. It's in two ways. Number one, let's connect the transit like the map I just showed you. We shouldn't have these big gaps. And also, people have to be able to connect to transit, whether that's biking, shuttles, walking. We're now seeing evidence. I hope it turns out to be true, but Uber and Lyft are reporting uh, great success in bringing people to transit and that getting our existing transit systems working really well is very important to us. Highway 101, this is the absolute critical element of peninsula transportation. And great progress now, there's been a, a long delay and how does it connect? Uh, so a lot of progress lately and how we uh, add additional HOV lanes, how we add additional capacity, not just in lanes, but in other management measures to add capacity to this corridor. I'll say we're seeing good progress, I hope it continues, and I really want to see that it's not just San Mateo fixing this alone. It really needs to say it's integrated with what happens in Santa Clara and it's integrated with what happens in San Francisco. Activate the Bay, we had a ferry trial, we ran a ferry for one month, and people absolutely loved it. Getting permits to do this for the long haul was uh, challenging to us, but we see that uh, some private companies and working with Facebook have picked that up. We really do believe that the port of Redwood City is a tremendous regional asset that is being underutilized. And we really hope that we can find ways to really develop the bay. And Caltrain, I almost can't say enough about Caltrain. There's a long range plan to double capacity. It totally, totally needs to be done. That capacity will get used up as fast as it is created. Uh, the only thing that we can ask is that it happen faster and that the regional agencies communicate, uh, the, the bodies, so the three count, uh, counties can give them a reliable funding source. On the notion of connectedness, I'll also say, it's not just connecting the transit system, but it's connecting what used to be silos between modes. And in reality, the ferry discussion shouldn't happen separately from the 101 discussion. The 101 discussion is not separate from what happens to Caltrain. Caltrain is not separate from what happens on 280. These are all integrated, and we need to make sure we get the connections going uh, between all of the people representing the modes. And of course, our agencies beginning to connect more and more. Um, the connections across public sector, private sector, nonprofits, all of that needs to happen. And when I think of this challenge or the need for that to happen, I'm reminded of a quote from a book by Adam Kahane. He was present when South Africa began the post-apartheid era. And they had a lot of problems. And these are people who had been pretty much literally at war for decades, who now had the assignment of creating a post-apartheid government and how would the country, com country work after that. So they had a, a saying, a joke that floated around that they really had two options, a practical option and a miracle option. Uh, getting together, praying that a band of angels would come down and solve their problems for them, that was the practical option. If they were to sit down, communicate, and work together to solve the problem, that would be a miracle. <laughs> I don't share the cynicism in this regard. What we've seen locally, just very recently, 
The city managers of Redwood City, Menlo Park, have signed an agreement with Palo Alto, Mountain View, and Stanford to say, we're gonna work together and coordinate our bike solutions. We see the agencies working together for the one-on-one -on -one corridor. MTC, MTC and ABAG are working together. And most importantly, I see this room. This room is full of people who represent public, private, nonprofits. We represent different interests, but we understand that connectedness is not just transportation connectedness. Housing is connected. Regional economic development is connected. And this room gives me good faith and confidence that we are going to come together. We are going to connect all the silos that used to exist, and we're going to build a much better San Mateo County and Bay Area. So on behalf of Google, I really look forward to working with all of you, and thanks for having me.